Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to create a table using the Management Studio GUI. This is another installment in my SQL Server Fundamentals videos in which I'm trying to teach just the bare bones basics, walk you through the most simple, simple, simple stuff, get you going inside of SQL Server. Um, this is number seven, I believe, and there'll be more coming. Now, the concept here is that we need to create tables. Databases have tables. And so in the previous videos, we've set up a server, we've um, created databases. Now we need to start putting things into it. And so we're going to start off with creating tables. There's, there's all kinds of other things we could do, but tables are really important. There's a lot to this topic, and this is fundamental. So we're just going to keep it real simple. We're just basically going to talk about the very cool concept that tables are where the data lives. And that's pretty much it. We're going to use the, um, the table designer windows. We're going to use the Management Studio GUI. Now, understand... I prefer using T-SQL, but guess what? We will have another video on how to create tables using T-SQL. So first off, we're going to start off with creating a table using the Management Studio GUI. Let's go take a look at it. So I'm connected up to a server and I'm connected up to a database. We're going to use Database Fundamentals Test Database. And if you look inside here, there are no user tables currently. If we want to add a user table, we can right click, select new, and select table. And there are other types of tables because we're doing fundamentals. We're not going to get into all the different things of graph tables versus file tables versus external tables. We're going to go nice and simple and talk about a table. Now it's going to open up a wizard for us and we can start to create tables from here. Now the basic window on the left shows us the columns. Columns are where we define the data and the data type. The column has to have a name, it has to have a data type, and we have to decide whether or not we're going to allow nulls in that column. Nulls are a very complex topic. We're not going to get into a whole lot of it. Let's just go with the general idea that less nulls is better. Requiring data is better. That's not to say that you, you know, if you just don't know what data is, null is a valid more than valid choice, but lean towards avoiding null where you can, is all I would say about nulls for the moment. Now, over on the right, we see the properties. Now, this is the table properties itself. Using this GUI and this wizard, this is how we're going to control some of the information of the table. And then down at the bottom are column properties, which are properties about a given column. So to get started, we're going to go over first to the table properties. And we have to give it a name. And we're just going to call it, you know, my first table. Which database is it in? We already know. You can provide a, a description. There's also the concern about which schema does it go in. Now, schemas are a management tool and also a security tool. We will have a video on schemas for now. We're just going to leave it with the DBO schema, which is database owners. Which server is it on? Well, it's on the server that we're running against. And you can get into some fun stuff of defining, you know, whether or not this table has an identity column, whether or not it's indexable, um, what kind of lock escalation, and all this is much more advanced stuff. We're not going to get into it currently. These will come up later. But right now, we, we need to know what name it is, and we need to know what schema it belongs to. And the schema is a drop-down list, and there are other built-in schemas um, we're just going to go with the default DBO for the moment. The other schemas have different functions, and we could get into those, but it's it's more advanced topic, and we just want to walk through the basics of creating a table right now. So, once we've defined the properties on the table, where we need to refocus ourselves now is on the columns. Now, column names, you know, it can go up to, uh, I believe, 255 characters. That's something you can look up. I don't keep that stuff in my head. But you can define the name. And you do want it to be descriptive. There's nothing worse than looking at tables and column names and not understanding what it is they're going for. So let's just say, you know, it's my first column. So it's our very first column. Then we have to pick the data type. Now, data type is a long discussion. Um, if it sounds like I say that there's long discussions, well, there are. There's long discussions about everything in SQL Server. 
but here we are going to define the kind of data that we store. Now, the default it went to was um, a car uh, 10, but that's not what we have to choose. We can choose, you know, a variable character, um, which is down here, varcar, um, varcar max, all these different data types, numbers, money, all the rest, geometry, whatever it is. Here's my core suggestion, and, and I cannot be very uh, uh, understated on this. You should make darn sure that you're using the correct data type for the data. Please store numbers in number fields. Store dates in date fields. Store time in time fields. Store strings in car or var car, mixed or variable, whatever you're going to do with them, fine. But make darn sure that you're using the right data types for the data. Don't go with, well, we wanted to store dates, but we want them to look a certain way, so we're going to store it as a string. No, no, no. You take away massive functionality. You modify the way the indexing occurs. It hurts behavior and performance, and you do not want to do that. Don't hurt yourself day one. Use the right thing for the right job. So we're going to start off with Varkar. 50 is pretty big. You can go up to, um, I think, 1024, I think it's the max on Varkar. In Varkar would be half that. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because you don't want to test the maxes. Let's just put in something reasonable, say 25 characters, and it's variable in length. Now, do we allow nulls or not? Um, again, my bias is towards not allowing nulls, but I absolutely understand why you might want to. So that's one column. Nice and easy to set up. Now, if you notice down below here, and we can adjust this window so we can see it easier, we have the column properties. So it shows the name, and you could adjust it down here. And then if we save that, it will keep it. We're not going to right now. Does it allow nulls? And right now it's set to no. And again, we can change that to yes. The data type, and it's the same data type list as up above. And yes, you can use this down here to create all this stuff. Um, do you want to put in default values for it? You can. Um, that's a different discussion. Changing the correlation from the database default, again, gets more advanced. Are we talking about computed columns? Again, a more advanced issue. We're not going to go down those roads. You can add descriptions about columns, too. And this is a great way to document your database as you build it. So it's something you want to think about. Um, is it full text? No. Is this an identity column? Absolutely not, especially because we're going to be using Varkar. And you get some idea of some of the other information that you could modify depending on what kind of data it is. So let's just add another column. My first number column. And in this case, we're going to pick a number. Now there's different kinds. There's numeric, which is a, a decimal type number, or there's integers, small int, big int, um, integer, tiny int, which are simply digits. And so integers, not um, digital numbers. And then you get into all kinds of other fun stuff. But we're just going to go simple. We're going to say int. And we're not going to allow nulls again. And, you know, we can keep going. And you can add a large number of columns to the table. Again, don't add, don't try to get something big. Try to keep it fairly small. Um, the right size, the right amount. Um, we could say date or date time or date time too if you're looking at a really big one. Um, but we're just going to go with date. And now that would store dates. And we can now, all of that is done. And we can keep going from here. But here, let's, let's do this instead. Let's go back and just edit what we're talking about. In fact, let's edit everything. Instead of saying my first table, let's just call this person. We can actually make this the person table. So this is going to store information about people. And so we're going to go in here and say we're going to give it a person ID column. And that's going to be an integer. And you'll notice I'm typing everything. I don't have to use the drop-down lists. I don't have to use anything. I can use the defaults. I don't have to type, you know, wait to type things in. I can use the tab to work my way through. Whoops. 
And there we have it, a nice straightforward set of columns that we could then work with. Now you can do other things here too. We can highlight a column, say, and say set it to be the primary key. We could try inserting a column or deleting a column. We could start setting up relationships, indexes, all kinds of fun stuff directly against the table from this GUI. We're not going to be messing with those at the moment. We're going with, again, core, simple, straightforward stuff. Once we're ready, once we're sure that we've got things set, we can either hit Control S or we can save. Now, literally, it's not saving the table. What it's doing is, is creating the table. If we go back over here to the Explorer window and hit Refresh, we will now see that we have a dbo.person table, and that dbo.person table has the columns that we defined here. And that is how we create a table from the Management Studio GUI. Now, don't go away. If these fundamentals videos are helpful, you've really got to let me know. I need, I need likes. I need comments. Um, I need to know that I should continue doing this work. So please um, hit the like, hit the, hit the subscribe, definitely leave a comment that this is useful information. Don't go away, we're not done yet. The thing is, the SQL Server frequently gives you multiple ways to get something done. Yeah, we can use the GUI as we did today. We can use T-SQL as we've done before. We can start using things like PowerShell. We can get in all kinds of different scripting mechanisms. None of these things is wrong at all. All of these things work to get you to the end point where you want to get to. I have a database. I have a place to store my data. I have tables in which to put my data. However, you're going to hit the issue eventually that you've got to be able to do these things programmatically. And so I would focus what's going to be my next video on how to create a table using T-SQL. But I want to teach the fundamentals using the GUI because the GUI gives you an easy way to learn. And that's, you know, learning should be simple. We should be able to do literally simple things and build on them over time, um, including saying the word literally. That's it. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.